disclaimer, this would have been my video I put up on Valentine's Day, but then the Eagles lost the Super Bowl, and then once Valentine's Day passed, I was like, what's the point? But no, I spent like an hour filming this. You will see it. And also, I had like a horrible cold when I filmed this, so my voice sounds really bad. I'm very sorry, but there's nothing I can do. And I cannot film this again because if I if I decide to film this again, then this video is never going to happen. So, enjoy! Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Morgan. This is my channel, Pisces Paperbacks. And happy Valentine's Day! Today we're doing, I think it's kind of funny to call it a Valentine's Day themed topic, but... I'm going to be playing Smash or Pass with the heroes, love interests, etc. of every monster romance or paranormal romance that I have ever read. Okay, here are the rules. I'm going to be going chronologically from the first one I read to the most recent one I read just because that's the easiest way for me to sort my Goodreads read books. It's all adult romances, so no YA. Otherwise, I would have included like Carry On and Twilight because those love interests are vampires, but like no YA. And also no like general romance subplots like the house in the cerulean sea or things like that because technically those are like a monster love interest romance but they're not adult romances so it doesn't count for each book i will be grading the hero on two scales a pass fail smash or pass or a one to five scale like the weirdness scale um kind of copying both Kayla from Books and Lala and Mara at Books Like Whoa, they've both kind of done something like this for different genres. But basically, this is on a scale from one to five. How inhuman is this love interest? So one is a human with magic powers, and five is like Cthulhu. You know what I mean? So that's the weirdness scale. And then my last disclaimer is that I did not go back and look up the names of all these love interests because that sounded like it would take way too fucking long and so if i remember their name i'll say their name if i don't remember their name i won't say their name oh i guess my last rule is gonna be that if it's a series where the love interest in every single book is the same kind of non-human being a la ice planet barbarians i will only be smash or passing the first book whereas if it's a series where each book has a different type of supernatural creature then I will be doing each of them. You know what I mean? So let's go. Starting from the top, the very first monster romance I ever read was Wolf Song by TJ Klune, which by the way, this is the beautiful new cover. It did not have this cover when I read it. This is a werewolf romance. So they are humans and they turn into wolves. So in terms of the weirdness scale, it's going to be like a two because they at least have a form that is entirely non-human, but it's going to absolutely be a pass because in this book, which is the only one in the series that I've read, the love interest is like a child for half the book. So that's immediately off the table. Not interested. Pass. You might see a theme with vampires at the, in, the, in the top half of this. That was maybe my start in paranormal romance. But this next book is A Quick Bite by Lindsay Sands. This is the first book in her Arjuno vampire series, which is my favorite origin series for vampires that I've ever read because it's absolutely fucking ridiculous on the weirdness scale. Like, they have weird vampire stuff, but it is a one because they're not <laughs> supernatural creatures. It's like a sci-fi origin. They're just people with, like, weird science stuff going on. I love it. I'm obsessed. It's so stupid. So it's like weirdness scale one, but absolutely smash because they're all really rich. Up next, another vampire, Halfway to the Grave by Janine Frost. This one, I do know the name. The love interest for all seven of these books is a guy named Bones. He is a vampire and he is sexy. He is dashing and smart and romantic and I love him. Absolutely smash. Weirdness scale, they're gonna get a solid two because they are vampires, but they have some weird stuff going on. Like they can fly and like, they, they got some funky stuff going on there. Dark Lover by J.R. Ward is next. This is the first book in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series, which I absolutely adore. All the love interests are basically the same type of vampire. So I'm only gonna rank this one. And weirdness, it's probably going to be a one. I think they just kind of all look really big and strong. And they have some weird cultural stuff going on, which is why for the Smasher Pass, I'm going to have to pass, unfortunately. Even though I love these books, they're fucking weird. Actually, this first book and like an overall kind of gets a one for 
the weirdness factor. But the hero of the second book, which is my favorite out of all of them, he actually turns into like a Godzilla-esque monster with hair. So he gets a three. Next is Dark Prince by Christine Feehan. First of all, this book fucking sucks. Don't fucking read it. But absolutely pass. Holy fucking shit. Every single per member of like the ancient race that's like the supernatural entities in this book, they can like read minds, but they can also like psychically roofy people and influence them and bond them to you forever or bond you to them forever like against your will low-key by tricking you into it and but they get like a two for weirdness because they like heal themselves by burying themselves in the ground they can like shape shift create stuff out of dirt it's just like it's kind of weird oh my god mating the huntress by talia hibbert this is another werewolf romance He's just a guy who turns into a werewolf. So it's a two, but a smash. I loved this novella. Absolutely recommend if you want to try check it out. It's so cute. It's so good. I don't remember his name, but I, yeah, absolutely smash. Okay, this is another one of my favorite monster romances I've probably ever read. This is Radiance by Grace Draven. I love this book. Highly recommend. It's also, like, such good friends to lovers, which is, like, the best trope. But... <laughs> it's probably like a four and a half on the weirdness scale a big part of this romance is that they find each other physically repulsive at the beginning like he has gray skin and pointy teeth and just like blank white eyes like there's no pupil or iris or anything it's just like blank white and like claws he's like he's supposed to be disgusting and in kind of like an eel to look at very very off-putting so it's going to be a four and a half. And unfortunately, despite his lovely personality, I don't know if I can get down with, with all that. So that's going to have to be a pass for me. Okay, let's get into it. Ice Planet Barbarians. Weirdness. Three and a half. They are tall. They are blue. They have horns. They're covered in like a velvety fur. And not to get too vulgar with it, but they're, they're a little, not, li not little, um, reminiscent of rabbit vibrators comes to mind. So three and a half, four, let's say four. They're very inhuman-esque. No, let's go three and a half. And I would smash. So we don't need to, we don't need to delve into that, but yeah smash okay the next book i'm going to talk about is payback's a witch by lana harper i wasn't sure whether i wanted to include the contemporary witchy romances i ended up deciding to clearly because they're more just contemporary romances than they are paranormal romances but there is magic so i thought i would count them so in terms of weirdness one may maybe zero like the love interest is just a human. Her name's Talia, I think. So just one on the weirdness. Would I smash? Yes. She's a hot, like, necromancer. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Then the X-Hex. Another, like, zero for weirdness. Just another guy who has magic. Sure. Um, would I smash? He's just a guy. So, like, I'm gonna say pass. You know, <laughs> he's just like some guy. Okay, Claimed by the Orc Prince is going to come up next by Lionel Hart. This was really cute. I read the first one and I think I started the second one, but I never finished it. But it, was, it wasn't like on purpose. It just kind of like petered out. This was, this was cute. You should check it out if you want to. The love interest is an orc. Actually, I think the main character is an elf. I don't really, it's not as important. But the love interest is an orc. He's going to get like a three on the weirdness scale. He is green. He is tall. He has tusks. But that's kind of it. He just doesn't look human. But he's humanoid. He, I remember him being a big old sweetie. So I'm going to say smash. Then we get to a lady of Rooksgrave Manor. This is going to be a little more complicated. Because Miss Ma'am, the main character, has five, count them, five love interests. Fortunately, I believe there is official character art of all five of the guys, so I'm going to use them for this book. The second book, The Company of Fiends, does not have character art for all but one of them, which is very annoying, but it's fine. So, first, 
Amon. He is a, like a sphinx or something. He, I guess is like a three, again, three and a half again in terms of weirdness. Like, he has the wings, he kind of has a cat -like face, he has a tail, but the body is humanoid. But he is absolutely a fucking pass. I remember that he was insufferable. He was so possessive, but he knew the deal right from the start. Like, get over yourself. I did not like this man. Absolute pass. Dr. Underwood, however, was kind of like a Jekyll Hyde situation. He's actually gonna get a four. Maybe not a four, but I would give him a three. It's just like very inhuman, humanoid kind of creature monster. So yeah, but I would smash. Then we get Booker. He's actually probably a three as well, all solidly in the middle. He's extremely humanoid, but I think he's just like made out of stone. Just made out of stone is actually, I'm gonna be a two, because he doesn't have any inhuman features other than just being made out of stone. It's like a two and a half. He was also a sweetheart though, so I would smash. Ezra McKenna's gonna get like a one and a half. He's just a regular human man who got cursed to be invisible. So he's just invisible, which is like extremely weird, but he's just a guy, but I would smash. <laughs> he was funny, I liked him. Our last dude, August, is a vampire. He gets like a one and a half as well. He's just kind of like there, <laughs> he's a vampire. He was very romantic, I did like him. So I'm gonna smash. I would also say that if you want an example of an author clearly having a, an actor in mind when describing the physicality of a character, there was like maybe a half a sentence describing this man. And in my head I was like, oh, it's Henry Cavill. Up next, Morning Glory Milking Farm. This is about a minotaur. He is not humanoid at all solid four like he is a minotaur which as i mean i guess minotaur is like the head of a bull the body of a man but this these minotaurs like have tails they have the fur all the way down to like the waist the big horns the hooves hooves so four on the weirdness i remember him being extremely respectful though so I smash. Stalked by the Kraken. Four. Uh, you know what? I'm going to even. Yeah, I'm going to say four because it's shape shifting. But this guy does go like he can control how much of him turns into like Kraken tentacles. <laughs> so um, it's sometimes less, but he can do full transformation into a Kraken. So I'm going to go with four. And I'm actually going to pass. I don't know if I can do tentacles, but also he was very, I mean, stalked by the Kraken. This was, I liked this book a lot actually, but I don't know that I would want to be stalked by a Kraken. You know what I mean? Next is Mongrel by Lee Colgan. This one is not as popular as other books I've read, but it was cute. It was like a, a historical mystery about a vampire and a werewolf who investigate something together. I liked it. The vampire, I would say like a one and a half again for weirdness although they actually do like burst into flame if he touches the sun so that was kind of cool that bumps him up to a two but the other one the mongrel he's probably more of like a three because he's humanoid but he has it ears in his tail like all the time he can't fully shift that's why his like pack calls him a mongrel which was very mean of them however for both of these people, I'm probably gonna pass. They were very sweet together. I don't wanna interrupt their love. Kimberly Lemming is up next. That time I got drunk and saved a demon. I love this book. Highly recommend if you're interested. This is about a dragon shifter demon. So like in his humanoid form, he has a tail, he has the horns and he has some scaly spots, but he can shift to be a huge enormous dragon like the size of a house so that gets you a solid three and a half i like this book and he's super duper rich and he's kind of like funny in like a jerk way <laughs> he's kind of a jerk but like in a funny way that makes more sense i would smash then that time i got drunk and needed a love potion and a werewolf he's a werewolf 
it's like a two. He just turns into a wolf, but he looks like a human all the time. He, his name was Felix, and I remember him being like a little annoying. I'm gonna pass. Okay, A Company of Fiends by Catherine Moon. This is the other one I was talking about. She has like five love interests, and I only have an image for one of them, which is very frustrating, but we will persevere. Starting off her first guy, Hunter. He's an orc. He is a gentleman orc. I really liked him. He does get like a three and a half for weirdness. Again, with the tusks being really tall and green. This is green, why? Um, Smash, though, he is very gentlemanly. There's also Ronan. He was an imp. He was like all red and had a tail. I'm gonna pass on him. He was a little too mischievous for me. Just like a little bit too much of a trickster. I need to have full trust. I don't do with these people that like I don't know what they're unpredictable. It stresses me out. Nereus is a giant with six arms who's been devotedly in love with the heroine for years uh, but kept his distance until he thought she would be receptive. And I'm gonna say, hmm, actually what am I gonna say about him? He gets probably a four on the weirdness scale. Six arms is a lot and if I'm remembering correctly he might only have one eye like he might be a cyclops I don't know if I'm fully pulling that out of my ass but he could be a cyclops that is a little off-putting to me I think I'm gonna pass on him then there's Constantine which is a Gemini demon where it's like they fuse into one person named Constantine but they can defuse to be two separate demons one whose touch causes pain and one whose touch causes pleasure but like each one to an overwhelming unpleasant degree until they're in concert with each other honestly like four and a half for weirdness they were a very strange creature to read about it was just like what's going on here to the point where i'm gonna pass on them because it it's just too much for me like i'm not messing around with all that it seems like a very emo like highly charged situation. And then there's Jude, and I think he's like a half elf. He's a half something. So he he basically he's like a one and a half. He's like a human with pointy ears. Like that's it. Like a one on the weird scale. And then he's a cop. So pass. Next is Titan by Jillian Graves. I'm gonna say like three and a half for the weirdness. Because this guy's also made out of stone, which is similar to the guy from the Lady of Brooksgrave Manor. But he has wings and a tail, and he can, like, actually fly, and is actually a gargoyle. Like, he is a gargoyle who was, like, carved to be perched on the side of a building and then came alive through magic. Which, now that I'm talking about it, is a little weird. I'm gonna- is he a four, though? Let's just say three and a half smash <laughs> he is rich he's a sugar daddy he wants to take care of his woman i don't want to work <laughs> smash the dragon's bride by katie robert i really don't remember any of these characters names he is a dragon he is a dragon just a dragon he has a tail no wings but he does have two um two to so he's gonna get like a four and a half for weirdness smash <laughs> muscles and monsters by ashley bennett i didn't like this book at all he is a wolf man though he's not a werewolf he is fully a wolf man all the time humanoid obviously but he is in the face a wolf often in the book it talks about like his snout and how they have trouble kissing because he has a long wolf mouth and she has a human face so he gets like a four for weirdness, like four and a half, fully inhuman. Also, absolutely fucking pass. He was so annoying, absolute frat bro douche, one hundo. How to get a girlfriend when you're a terrifying monster. This is my only exception to the adult romance qualifier because this is technically... A romance there are no like sexual scenes in it it's more of an adventure but it is like filed under the genre of paranormal romance the love interest in this book is legitimately a piece of an eldritch being from an alternate dimension so in terms of the weirdness she's gonna get a five <laughs> that's what I've been saving my five for she's actually just 
an ever-changing, unknowable chunk of consciousness full of eldritch horrors. So she gets a five on the weirdness scale, but she also gets a smash. Oh my fucking god. Sweet Berries by Sam Nacosta. This is in the same universe as that Morning Glory Milking Farm book, except this one's about a mothman. Very funny haha, -ha, except for the fact that he gets a fucking four and a half for fucking weirdness because he, like, it's less than his, like, this is, I, this is talking a lot about penis I'm not used to. It's, like, held internally, you know what I mean? So it's less humanoid, like, that way. But also he has a long tongue that he can talk and also manipulate his tongue at the same time, which is so disgustingly horrific to me that it took me out of the book a couple times. So four and a half for weirdness, pass. Mistlefoe by Kimberly Lemming. He is like a rabbit demon, I believe. Um, he's probably going to get like a two for weirdness. I don't remember him actually having any weird. Oh, you know what? I think he's a fox spirit. And he can actually shift into a fox. So let me take that back. He gets a three, but he's also a pass. I think I found him a little frustrating and I'm like, not about all that. The Wolf at the Door by Charlie and Hara. These are werewolves that just look like humans and then they also turn into wolves. So it's like a one and a half, two on the weirdness scale. And I really loved the main guy in this. So he gets a smash. Oh no, he's a federal agent. He's a cop. Pass. Go Hex Yourself by Jessica Clare. This is another paranormal romance, so like a zero on the weirdness scale. It's just Adam Driver with magic, because <laughs> it's Raylo. Um, and as someone who reads Raylo fan fiction, not anymore, but I did at some point, I was very into it, nothing against Raylo. I'm still gonna pass because despite liking the ship and loving like reading Raylo fan fiction and loving the love hypothesis, I don't want to actually bang Adam Driver, so I'm gonna pass. From Bad to Cursed, another just regular contemporary witchy romance, zero, half, point five on the weirdness scale. And also, the, the love interest in this is just like, he's just like a nice guy. Like he's very sweet, he's a veterinarian, like he loves animals, he's very in touch with the earth. He's a little preachy about ve being vegan, which is like, okay. But he was just so normal. He's pretty forgettable. The reason I know so much about him is because I read it recently and I made a review video for that, which you should watch. I think I did a good job on it. I'm gonna pass. He's just a little like, eh, he's there. The Orc from the Office by Kate Pryor. Again, I think all the orcs are getting like three, three and a half, just cause like, they're green and they have tusks. And tusks are a little, tusks, I don't know why tusks are more for me than a tail, but I just feel like they are. I don't know. It's my rating scale, I can do what I want. I really liked this romance. I thought it was very sweet. And I think I would smash. I remember him being very kind and nervous in terms of his like romantic approach of the heroine and I just really loved how respectful he was. Smash. And last but not least, my most recent monster romance, Sweet Vengeance by Viano Oniomo. Holy shit. Three and a half, four on the weirdness. I'm gonna go four on the weirdness. He is, his name's Malachi. He is actually a demon. Like he is legitimately a demon from hell. Like wings, tail, horns just red eyes. He was so sweet. I love him. I want to say smash, but him and Joy, the heroine, are so perfect for each other. I don't want to interrupt that. So I will pass out of respect. 100% pass out of respect, but I would smash in an alternate universe where they're not together. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I'm gonna love editing all these pictures and but this is a sacrifice I'm willing to make for an idea that I think is very funny. I hope you guys are all having a lovely day. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!